Hi, my name is Catalina, and today we will learn about optimizing quantum circuits with Penny Lane. In previous videos, you have learned about installing Penny Lane, creating your first Qnode and your first quantum circuit, and using both simulators and actual quantum hardware. Today, we will learn about optimization, which is one of the building blocks of many fields within quantum computing, such as quantum machine learning. Optimization is all about finding the minimum value of a function. Your quantum circuit is actually a function. It takes gates and parameters that go into those gates. So you have parameterized quantum circuits. By changing the value of our parameters, you can find different measurements in your circuit. And you can make your circuit resemble some data that you can have. If you can think of your quantum circuit as a cost function and your measurement will be the cost, then you can use optimization for problems such as logistics or finding the ground state energies or excited energies and molecules. Today, we will create a quantum circuit that takes two gates. The first gate will not be parameterized. It will just be a poly X gate. And the second gate will be a Y rotation, which takes our theta, our parameter. We will graph the function for different values of theta, and we will see where we can find the minimum. Next, we will use an optimizer, and we will see how the value given by the optimizer is the same as the one that we found by just trying out many values of theta. Let's get to it and learn how we're going to do this on Penny Lane. The first thing we will do is we will import our favorite library, Penny Lane, as QML, and we will also import uh, NumPy from Penny Lane. This is very important because it's a special version of NumPy. For graphics or plotting, we will use matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Now, same as last time, we will need a device. In this case, we will use a fast C++ simulator, which is called Lightning Qubit. Today, we will only need a single qubit or a single wire. The next step will be to create our Qnode. For this, we will use our decorator, qml.qnode, and we will attach the device to it. Next, we can use a normal Python function to define our quantum circuit, which will take a parameter theta. Our first gate will be our poly X gate, and this will act on our first wire, which is wire zero. Wires are zero indexed. Uh, our next gate will be our Y rotation, which will take our parameter theta, and it will also act on our wire zero. For our measurement, which is a return value, we will use an expectation value. So we will use qml.expval of our poly Z observable, which is on the computational basis on our qubit zero. And we will find the value of our circuit, the measurement for a random value of theta, which is 0 0.1. As we can see, we get what tensor with two different values. The first one is minus one, about minus one. And the second one says requires grad equals true. So the first one is the measurement of our circuit for that value of theta. And we will see what the second one is. So now we mentioned that we were going to find uh, the shape of our quantum circuit for different values of theta. So we will uh, need 50 uh, different values of theta. And in this case, uh, in the range of minus pi to pi, for that we will use np.lin space. We could have chosen a different number of values of theta, but 50 sounds good. And now we will need the measurements of our circuit for these, each of these values of theta. So for each theta within those thetas, we will append the measurement of our circuit uh, to that list of measurements. Now, if you want to guess uh, what our quantum function looks like, then pause this video right now. If you don't want to guess, then keep watching. Or if you have already guessed, we will need an axis. So we will take it from subplots from PLT. And on that axis, we will plot uh, our thetas against our measurements. If you guessed correctly, you probably guessed that we have a sinusoid function. The maximum value is one, uh, which is on the Z axis on the positive Z axis, and it's equivalent to a zero state. And we get it with a value of theta of minus pi and pi. Our minimum value is at a value of theta of zero, and it has a value of minus one, which is on the negative Z axis, which is equivalent to a one state. Now for optimization, today we will use a gradient based method. So we will start at some random value of theta, let's say minus two, and we will find the gradient or the direction of maximum change of our function. So as our function changes, we can go against that gradient or downhill. We will take a number of steps. Uh, we have to choose that value correctly because 
If our steps are too small, we will take a long time to get to our minimum. Or if they are too large, we might also take a long time or even diverge. Now, as we mentioned, uh, we need to program our optimization by starting at some value of theta. We will say minus two. And we will tell Penny Lane that this is a parameter that we want to optimize over. So we will turn that minus two into a NumPy array, our special version of NumPy that comes from Penny Lane. And we will say that it requires grad equals true. This is what tells our program that this is a parameter that we want to optimize over. Now we can use our optimizer. We can use different optimizers. And today we will use a gradient descent optimizer, which takes some step size that we defined as 0.1 today. At the end of the video, we will learn how to find other optimizers. Now that we have our optimizer, we need to take those different steps. So we will have a number of iterations. Today we chose 100 iterations. And for each iteration, we will find a new value of theta and a new value of our circuit. So for each iteration in that range of 100 iterations, we will use a function called step and cost that lies within our optimizer. And that function will output the new value of theta and our previous cost. This is important to notice in case we need to uh, plot or figure out the value of our cost. So this function takes our cost function, which in this case is our circuit. Uh, it will output, it will be the equivalent to our cost function and it will take a parameter. For each 10 iterations, we will print the value of both theta and of the circuit for that value of theta. So if the iteration modulo 10 equals zero, each 10 iterations, we will print theta and the cost, which in this case is the measurement, the output of our circuit. If you wanna guess again what this looks like, make sure to stop the video now. Hopefully, you guessed correctly. We start at a value of theta of about minus two, and we get closer and closer to a value of theta of zero, which is the value of our parameter that minimized our function. Our cost also start getting lower and lower. It starts at about 0 0.33, and it gets as close as possible to minus one, which is our minimum in our function from what we saw in our graph. So usually we don't have access to this graph and to the shape of a function. This is why we need optimizers to find that minimum value. Now that you have learned how to use our optimizer, our gradient descent optimizer, you can go to the Penilene website, penilene.ai. We will share the link in the description of this video. You can go to the documentation and on the left hand side, you will find the gradients and trading section. Here you can learn more about optimization. You will also find the different optimizers that we have. Some of them are gradient based and some of them are not. So now it's your turn to check them out and see how the results differ from the one we use today. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have questions, please go to our discussion forum and subscribe for more quantum computing content on Xanadu.